Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and this week I've just been working on one task so far which was to do with the picking system and I'll explain all about that in a minute but it was a rather uninteresting repetitious task so I decided not to film for the first part of this week and I'll just give you an overview of the changes that I made to the picking system in a minute um, but today's Friday so I've still got one more day of development and I'll of course film all the way through today and show you what I'm working on. So as I mentioned, this week I've been working on the picking system and this is the system that allows you to select objects in the world. Uh, so it basically has the job of trying to work out which entity the mouse cursor is currently over. To do this, I surround every entity in the world in a bounding box and I then encode the ID of the entity into the color of its bounding box. So each of the bounding boxes here has a slightly different color. Then all I have to do is to get the color of the pixel at the mouse cursor's position convert that back to an ID and that tells me which entity should currently be selected. So for the first part of this week I was just redoing quite a lot of the code for this system and trying to optimize it a bit. Um, I've learned quite a lot of new things in the last couple of years since I originally implemented this so I was able to make some of the OpenGL stuff a bit more efficient. Then after that I needed to fix a problem with how accurate the system is because for some objects like the trees the bounding boxes are pretty inaccurate as so you can see here that the bounding box for the tree is quite a lot bigger than it needs to be and in fact if you place smaller objects under the tree they can't be selected because their bounding boxes are completely engulfed by the bigger tree box. To fix this I allowed for entities to have multiple bounding boxes like this so for the trees I could have a big bounding box for the leaves part and then a smaller bounding box for the trunk part so that objects under the tree could now also be selected. However, these new bounding boxes obviously had to be defined somewhere and had to be generated somehow. And unfortunately, after lots of trying, I couldn't really find a good way to generate multiple well-fitting bounding boxes for a single object. So in the end, I decided that I would have to add them in manually for every species in the game. So yesterday, I spent pretty much the whole day just going through all of the models in the game and adding boxes to them in Blender and then exporting the boxes and converting them to a format that my game could read, which, as you can imagine, was pretty boring. But it is now all completely done. The picking system is completely working now. And uh, that was actually the only task that I had planned for this week. So today I have a chance to get a little bit ahead of schedule. So I'll be getting started with programming today in a bit. But first, I'm just going to make myself a quick breakfast. So starting off today, I thought I'd add a fairly commonly requested feature, which is to have some way of telling how many of each species you have in the world. And a few people have suggested I should have an extra tab in the toolbar for this and have a whole statistics panel with lots of different stats about the current world. And I would like to add that at some point, but probably not until after release as an extra update. Um, I don't really want to spend too long working on that at the moment. But as a compromise, I thought in the progress panel, where you can see the overall progress and you can see all the things you've unlocked in the game, next to all the plants and the animals that you've unlocked, I've now added a bit of extra text, which just tells you how many of each you have in the world. So last week you might remember that I was doing a bit more work on the night sky and I implemented the stars by scrolling a texture across a completely flat quad but a few people mentioned in last week's video that it wasn't acting completely realistically and it would be much better if the stars were being projected onto a curved surface instead of just a completely flat one. So that's what I've just been implementing now and you can see an example of it here. Obviously it's exaggerated for the sake of this video. Um, but the texture is now being put onto a curved mesh, which I've generated uh, instead of being put onto a completely flat quad. And it makes the night sky look a lot more realistic. Next up today, I've just been getting my weekly dose of searching for free sound effects online, trying to find some more animal sound effects for the game. And I've just been adding a few new sound effects for the ducks. Last up this morning, I was just fixing a few final issues to do with the new camera. Um, so for example, when the mouse cursor is over a GUI panel, I disable the mouse inputs to the camera so that you don't accidentally move the camera around while you're trying to interact with the UI. But for now, I'm going to stop for a quick lunch and then this afternoon, I'm going to get started with uploading more of my tutorials to the Thin Matrix website.
For the last couple of hours I've just been slowly going through all my tutorial videos one by one and posting them onto the website and for each one I try to write a little bit about it as well so it takes a while and um, there's still loads to go so it's going to take me a lot longer. Um, I won't do any more today though but if I try and do a bit every day then I should be finished in a week or two. Half past four now and I've just been doing some more work on the language file stuff. You might remember this from last week. I need to get all of the hard coded text out of the code and into this CSV file here so that it can eventually be translated. And I think I'm now completely finished with that. So all of the text is in the language file, um, which is very good because this has been a very long task and it's been dragging on for quite a while. Anyway, I'm going to get outside now and go for a bike ride. I've been going for quite a few bike rides recently. You might have noticed from my other videos. Um, but I've been trying to put in a bit more effort lately to do more exercise because I know that sitting in front of my computer all day is not the best thing for my health. So I've really been trying to get outside more and move around a bit. And actually so far this year I've been running or cycling every single day so far, which is a big improvement from last year. Anyway, today I'm going to go on a bike ride to a nearby lake. Lastly today, just been doing a couple more things. So firstly, I created a very quick draft for the UI for the options menu, which is something that needs to get redone soon. And I didn't really have time to get started implementing that today. I only had half an hour left. So instead, I decided to make another low poly tree. Not even sure if we'll actually end up being in the game. I just really enjoy doing low poly modeling these days. And it's just a nice relaxing way to end off a pretty busy week. Anyway, I need to get started with doing some cooking now because I've got a few hungry friends coming around soon. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Not a whole load to show you this week unfortunately, but I did actually manage to get done everything that I needed to get done this week, so it wasn't too bad. Also talking of things that I need to do, I just wanted to very quickly show you exactly what I've still got left to do before the Equinox release. So you can see all of my tasks here. The orange ones are actually just future possibilities, so these are things that I might add after release. But the only things that I've still actually got to do before release uh, these few audio tasks here, that shouldn't take too long, I should be able to finish them in one day next week. Another little bug here, that should be a very quick fix. Also the options UI, as I mentioned, I need to redo that at some point. Then a couple more little glitches here, the evolution system I'm still not completely happy with, so I need to do a bit more work on that next week. And then there are just a few things that I need to improve with the engine. Um, not all of these are essential, but it would be nice to fix the most obvious graphical problems. So I should hopefully be able to get most of those things done next week and I'm also going to start focusing a bit more on marketing next week as well. Before I finish this week I need to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month who were Austin Adamson, Alvin Daly, Cole Foderaro, Casper Studios, Josh Gill, Daniel Theon, Claudio Dimitri, Charlie Quigley, Andrew Wilson, Ruar Salberg Olsen, Joshua Hannaford, Danny D, Clouded Dreams, Timothy Gibbons, Crazy Rusky, Wolfgang, Dylan Thompson, Jason Pack, Alberto Spina, Benjamin Fuller and Alexander Chavez. So a massive thank you to you guys and of course everyone else supporting me on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.